Whether you're hiring someone or renting out space to a tenant, a background check can be very important. And this Minot business not only does drug and alcohol tests, but also background checks. Sarah learned how it gets done. Check it out. Good morning. I am in Minot and I'm with Brenda. I'm so excited to chat with you today. I always learn so much. <laughs> I'm full of information. <laughs> <laughs> how do you keep it all sorted? Oh my gosh. Uh, it's just, it's grows on you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure. So today we're going to talk a little bit about background checks. And yes. I was asking you, I was like, I'm pretty sure I've had a background check for my driving record. But we, you, you were saying that it's... Background check is a generic term. It's an all-encompassing term. It doesn't tell you exactly what you've had. It means somebody has looked into some part of your history. That's it. Um, if you'd have a background check, you could have a driving record. You mm -hmm. could have either a seven or three year driving record. You could have a national criminal database check. You could have a previous employer check. You could have um, sexual predator checks. There's all kinds of different categories of background check. So if somebody was like, oh my gosh, I've got this creepy neighbor, like, could I get a background check on him? You cannot. <laughs> I cannot do a background check on somebody who has not, one, given me authorization, and two, been given his rights. They call pre-adverse action notices. Okay, say that one more time. A pre-adverse action notice. Okay. Or a post-adverse action notice afterwards. So before I do a background check or any kind of a check on somebody, mm -hmm. I have to have them sign off on it, and they have to be given their rights. And part of their rights is called a pre-adverse action notice. They okay. have to know who's doing the check. Okay. They have to know where they can go if I find any erroneous information. They have to be able to come to me so I can give them my source. So they oh. can go to that source and correct that information. Okay. And then, but as it, like, the, on the employer side of that, like, then that would be, like, a huge red flag, like, if they don't allow it, yeah. yes, okay. that would be a red flag. <laughs> um, doesn't mean you can take action on that. Really? Because they haven't, you, you don't have to hire them. Okay. But you say you already have an employee, you can't penalize them or um, discipline them based on the fact that they wouldn't allow you to do a background check. I, I, I would assume that people would just go in and like, okay, let's do it. No, people have rights yeah. and we have to protect those rights. Which is and there's a way we do that. And they give authorization and they're given their rights and how they can go and correct erroneous information because a lot of people uh, get confused with other people. It's a big country, yeah, sure. country and um, sometimes names get moved around. You're married, your maiden name may be mm -hmm. similar to somebody else's. Mm -hmm. Dates of birth, dates are transposed and you're accused of somebody else's mistakes and you need to correct that. You need to know how to go about it. So if I just give you and, and your employer tells you you failed your background check, <sighs> and no other information, you have no idea what's been right. done or where to go. Yeah. Most background checks take less than a day. Most criminal histories, most driving records take less than a day. Wow. It's the people doing those that take the long time. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if somebody had questions about like, should I do a background check on like on my employees, how often, how, like, is it usually just at the beginning it's of employment? It's usually upon pre-hire, so before okay. you hire them. I don't recommend you do one after you hire them because if you find something out that's not working with your business, now you have to fire them. So okay. before you hire them, it's if you're option. thinking of doing a background check or a criminal history, driving mm -hmm. record, you need to um, do that before you hire them. Also, have criteria available. In other words, are you excluding only felons? Are you excluding misdemeanors? What type of misdemeanors? Um, what type of felons? Um, that sort of thing. Okay. You need to so know no what that. the disqualifying okay. criteria would be for you to hire. Have okay. all that decided either written or in your mind beforehand. Okay. Well, that's a super helpful tip, Brenda. Thank you. Oh my you. gosh. Is there anything else you'd like our viewers to know about background checks? Um, I can't do background. Say if you wanted to you hired somebody as a, as a, as a babysitter, okay. and you, before you hired them, you wanted to check, but you didn't want them to know you were checking. I can't do that. I, I have to have their authorization. That's the number one thing. I get a lot of calls with people saying, can you check this guy out? No, I can't. <laughs> I really can't. <laughs> You'd be so busy. I would. You'd be like, I would, but it, it would everybody. also be very unfair. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. So make sure, and if, and if somebody was going to like bring that up, 
like, if you do have a babysitter, like, would you just simply ask, like, are you willing to do a background check? Exactly. And then there's a form that okay. they can fill out. They can just pop in and fill out a form. Also, another thing, if you're hiring a 16-year-old babysitter, we're not going to find much because <laughs> most juvenile records are sealed. Okay. <laughs> I hope you feel comfortable enough with your babysitter that yeah. you don't need to do a background check, but, you know. Well, if you're hiring a nanny full-time, you may want to. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Brenda. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, back to you in the Bismarck studio. And for more information, Northern Testing is on call 24-7. You can call them at 701-839-4730 or in an emergency, 701-240-0550. They are located at 2201 15th Street Southwest in Minot.